Hello YouTube, welcome back, thank you for joining me. For those of you who have recently subscribed, thanks for jumping in. For those of you who have been waiting a while for a new video, I apologize for the delay. A lot has happened. We've moved back from Reno to Kansas City. We also had a baby about a month before that happened. And we are finally in our new basement studio. Well, the basement is now the studio. We don't live in a basement studio. We have a house with a basement and I have built a studio. I'm about to walk you through my studio build. Let me give a quick disclaimer for those of you who have been following along. You know that I am not the studio gear review kind of guy. I don't like to just sit in the studio and spout off the specs of a certain piece of gear and show it to you on a desk. I like to get out in the field, try it out, put it through its paces and let you know my thoughts on it. And so unfortunately right now where I'm at in life, you know, having two kids now and back into video production full time, it's gonna be studio videos for just a little while. I will still be able to get out and test some gear in the outdoors and then come fall and winter, we'll be back into camping and really testing it in the outdoors. But for now, we're gonna be in the studio trying out some new gear. I'm excited to try a few things out, a few things coming your way, but let's jump into my studio build. So if you're gonna build a studio, there's a few things that you need to do. There's a lot of things that you need to do actually, but number one thing is have a plan. You want to have something in mind. And what I had in mind was a British pub. I just love, you go into a British pub, it's just like, it's dark, but it's warm and inviting. Just love being in a British pub or a Scottish pub. So I wanted a dark green paint with some wall sconce lighting that faced the wall and didn't have any exposed light to the camera. Um, so that was the entire feel that I was going for, you know, a lot of dark wood, wood textures that I'm going to add, you know, my desk, my bookshelf. I'm really happy with how it turned out. You should likewise have a plan when you're going into it. What did I use and how did I build this? In our basement, there was a wall frame already in place. I guess they had not, uh, they originally had maybe a partially finished basement, then they renovated the house and just left this wall frame up bare. And we have this basement space uh, that is not finished. It looks like it was at some point finished somewhat because the, there's a, a wall frame in place. <clears throat> but since we moved in about a month ago, they've added some structural support. You'll see these steel beams the whole way around this side, which is unfortunate because this is the side I want to use. But today I am transforming this space into my new YouTube studio slash um, kind of a guest room and hangout space for the kids. So I needed to cover this and I didn't want to use drywall. And so I needed to find something that was cost effective and temporary, but also going to look decent. So I found this really cheap particle board kind of uh, sheet thing. It's about four or five millimeters thick. It's pretty solid. It is somewhat flexible. Uh, and it also has a smooth surface as well. I went for the, the vertical kind of tongue and groove look because it, it's what I wanted, you know, going along with British pub kind of feel, get that tongue and groove wall, wall feel. And so that's what I went with. This was about $22, $23 a panel. So seven panels total came out to about $160 right there. When you're doing large materials like that, you're gonna to wanna to take into account how are you going to transport it back to your place? I had to borrow a truck. Uh, just keep that in mind if you don't have a truck. You're going to need to transport it. You're going to need to be able to pick it up. I actually found two, uh, two pretty decent 8x12 carpets. Uh, one will probably go upstairs in the living room and one will go in the basement uh, for 94 bucks each. So it's, they were like those leftovers that people uh, decide they don't like the color or wrong size or something but you know quality carpet uh, that that's so i had to bring it all back and these are four by eight sheets my walls are only 85 inches so it's just shy of eight feet so every single panel i needed to cut so the next step once i got all my panels here is to cut them to trim the tops trim the width to what i need especially if like the corner piece was a really narrow one there's a few narrower ones that i needed Two of them I was able to use the full four, four foot width. Uh, sorry, three of them I was able to use the full, full width. And then they all had something like a vent or an outlet that needed to be cut out with the jigsaw. So I bought a jigsaw 
And I think a jigsaw is probably one of the better tools for this job because it's very lightweight, handheld, easy. A jigsaw is a pretty inexpensive way to do this and definitely you're gonna need a jigsaw for something like the outlet. I laid them out, I measured, I cut and put them in place. They fit well, all except for one I had to recut. But for the most part, part good to go. Instead of using finishing nails, I actually went with drywall screws because I feel like finishing nails, I feel like they would have come loose with this. It's just a little bit too thick of a material that I decided I needed some drywall screws. So instead of those, I, I went ahead and I put the screws into each panel. Now you are gonna notice with something like this material, you're gonna notice once you put your screws in each spot and you wanna do them sequentially. You don't wanna do corner to corner to corner to corner and then put the rest in because you're gonna get a lot of, of bubbles and warped, warped openings. You wanna do them in order. So go straight across, straight down. That way it pushes all of the, the excess down to that corner. And by that time, your panel is gonna be flat, which is really nice. I still have some bumps, but it is what it is. It looks all right. I've got all my panels up. Next thing I need to do is paint. This is pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Go ahead and you know grab a roller, grab your paint of choice, and roll it on. Looking back on it, I'd probably do a flat finish on my paint, but I'm okay with this. It looks looks fine. It's it's that kind of dark but warm feel I'm going for anyway. And I think it looks good on camera. So I'm gonna stick with it. Maybe I'll change it a month down the road. Now I've got my paint on. Last thing to do is put up my sconce lighting. So I bought these on Amazon and some Philips Hue bulbs so that I can just easily control the levels. Um, they're not the bicolor and they're not the color LEDs. They're just uh, a nice warm light, but that's okay because it just gives me better control than a regular bulb. So these are actually a hardwired light that would go probably on an exterior. These probably aren't interior lights, but I found some nice uh, AC conversion kits that you just screw the connections together and you instantly have a light that you can plug into the wall. So that's what I did for my lighting and I just kind of put the wires through the wall and put an extension cord out back and all good to go. I did put these mounts into the studs because this paneling is just too thin to support anything other than maybe a photo with a you know a little finishing nail type of thing. This was a pretty easy setup and I think paneling was 160, uh, paint was about 40, the lights were about 120. So I think for just over 300 bucks, I, I put my studio in. Of course, I have all my gear and my desk, et cetera. I haven't bought anything other than that. So for around 320, I have a really nice looking studio. And I'm really happy with how it looks. I'll put links below to the lights that I got, the hue bulbs and whatever else I used, if I used anything else, um, so that you guys can take a look at it and get some ideas. If you have any questions, I'm in no way an expert uh, on carpentry or home building. But if you have any questions, feel free to reach out, comment below, hit me up on Instagram. I'm happy to help if I can. Thank you all for watching and joining. I'm excited to get back into YouTube with you guys and I will see you next time.